interesting thing about these abstract pieces is that usually when I was working very realistically, I would plan the pieces out, and I pretty much had a road map all the way through as I worked. I mean, occasionally a piece wouldn't work out, but there was a very secure road map. And I found after a while that I needed, I've always needed something new to challenge me and excite me, and I can always tell when it's time to move to a new medium. My first really serious body of work was in Pennsylvania on our farm. I had a very large organic garden. And those pieces were very intricate and mapped out. Actually, I guess I could say that all of my work is quite intricate. But I had it very well mapped out in my mind, compositionally and everything else, before I started and as I progressed. Then I worked in oil over egg tempera, primarily in tropical subject matters. We were living in Florida, and those also had a great deal of planning and were quite well mapped out before I even began on them. Now with this new body of work, I'm really enjoying the uncertainty of laying down something underneath, something else on top, and then scratching through and never really knowing until the very end whether the whole thing's going to get pulled together. So far, I think most of them have been pretty successful, but I love that edge of not really knowing until the very end whether it's all going to pull together and that uncertainty as I'm working, which I've never had so much in my work as I do now. It's a very exciting process and I have to let go of my critical mind and just let it happen and say, if this doesn't work, that's okay. It doesn't matter. I mean, with the drawings that I do, I spend so many hours scratching through. Some people say, how can you do that and be okay with the fact that it may not turn out? Well, maybe I'm just lucky that usually they tend to resolve themselves one way or the other, but I'm starting to really give in to that edge. Because it was very traumatic. I'd wake up in the middle of the night wondering, what am I doing with these pieces? And now I'm just really enjoying letting go into the whole process of it. One of them I particularly felt that way with was called Calabacitos of Many Colors. I'm fascinated now living in the Southwest with all these wonderful Navajo and other Indian rug patterns, and I started integrating some of them and the inspiration from them into the pieces. And on that one, I did a fretwork pattern that was very complicated underneath in watercolor, then laid a Nav very colorful Navajo rug pattern on top, scratched through, and then muted some of the rug pattern to integrate the whole thing. But it was, it's such a wild piece, I really wasn't sure to the very end whether it would work or not. I think the Southwest has really had an influence on my work that way. It's a whole other palette, color-wise, out here, and a whole other source of inspiration. I can't wait to scratch through on these. I usually feel that way. It's kind of like Christmas, like an advent calendar. You get to open a new door to scratch through and see what's going to happen with the images and watercolor underneath and how they interact with the abstract piece that I'm creating on top. So it's just really wonderful here in New Mexico, you know, as I say, wandering down a trail and finding all these cave paintings, rock paintings, pottery shards. There's so much archaeological and historical significance here. We were hiking up in uh, Kitchen Mesa, which is in Abiquiu, and you, you really felt like dinosaurs could walk out of the landscape easily. It was so unearthly. And I think that and the incredible palette, we actually, people think of New Mexico, people that aren't lovers of New Mexico may think of it as being kind of a brown place. But actually, having grown up on the East Coast, I think there's a, actually, the longer I live here, I realize there's actually a lot more color here than anywhere else I've ever lived. Just the sky, the grasses, the rocks. There's this incredible palette, and I'm starting to draw on a very different palette from living here. I'll go out on a bike ride to Galisteo on a spring day, and I'll suddenly see all these violets and greens and uh, different blues, colors that, combinations that I've never even conceived of before. So that whole palette is starting to work its way into my, into my work. I started using these spirals underneath in the watercolor in some of these 
uh, sophisticated scratch boards that I'm doing and realized that those were symbols that you would find in petroglyphs, etc. So I find it interesting how that tie is, is moving into my work, that connection with where I am. One of the pieces that I did at Annunciation, I would not call myself a religious person. I'm a very spiritually oriented person. And I called it that because I think it's such a beautiful image when the angel comes to Mary and the virgin birth. But it's the whole idea of purity and things coming to us in a way that we don't expect in our life, and which can be stressful as it was for her, but very magical. And uh, I, I used a, again, a rug pattern with many cross images in it underneath the drawing. That one I actually have been experimenting with black gesso and then drawing on top with a white pencil or chalk marker. I'm standing here with the Sangre de Cristos to my back and facing the Jemez and the Sandia Mountains. This land is so beautiful. It's like a sculpture when you walk it. There's so much inspiration, dead stumps, gnarled trees, incredible rock formations, vistas. I'm more of a close-up person, but the vistas here are just incredible. I did a series of three paintings based on the Calabacitas, a wild squash that grows all over the fields here. It has yellow flowers, large squash blossoms in the spring that turn into squash in the summertime. The Indians used to use the squash for a shampoo. I decided to do a soft ground etching of it. I thought the forms were so wonderful. And I, Bob prepared a plate for me with soft ground on it, and then we laid the plant on top of it and ran it through our huge press back and forth. At the, on the second pull, about a gallon of green goo came pouring all over the floor, the blankets, the press, everywhere. It was a mess. But we got an incredible image on the plate that we then etched into the plate, and it became is part of a print that's going to be a diptych uh, with the drawing uh, also as part of the diptych, a very detailed drawing of the Calabacitos, and then the very abstracted image that we got from putting the pl actual plant material through the press. Each place I've lived has had a profound effect on my work. The paintings I do are much less planned. They evolve as I go along. There are scary points when I'm not sure if it's all going to be pulled together, and then somehow or other it generally is. So this is a, actually a much more stimulating way for me to work. And I'm, when I first started working this way, I had a lot of fear, some sleepless nights, a lot of anxiety. But it's become so much a part that I just tell myself, no, this is part of the process. Don't worry about it. If you can't deal with it today, at the end of the day, put it aside. Go into it with a fresh focus in the morning, and it always seems to come together somehow. So that has been a really wonderful thing for me. And I think it's moved into my life in a way I couldn't have expected that it's enabled me to live my whole life more that way, um, which is something I didn't even realize until I just began talking about it right now, that how that has really permeated how I live my life, and uh, it's a wonderful thing. My father once told me, because I'm such a perfectionist, that I should learn to be more feckless. And I think actually through my work, I am learning that. And it's a very freeing process to, to give in to that um, flow that, of, of um, inspiration as it comes to me. So.